Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about gravitational potential energy. Now we've already talked about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to the motion of an object. Potential energy, on the other hand, potential energy is stored energy. And it's stored energy due to the position of an object. There are many different types of potential energy, but but the most common one that we deal with in mechanics is gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is going to be stored energy due to position in a gravitational field. Now we can think of a gravitational field as storing energy for an object because if you think about dropping an object from three different heights, that object is going to accelerate down and speed up as it goes towards the ground. If you drop it from a really low height, say close to the ground, then it's not going to gain as much energy as it falls, as if you drop it from a much higher height, like the top of a building. So the higher up you are in a gravitational field, the more energy is stored, the more potential energy is stored. And therefore, you have the potential to get more kinetic energy out of an object that you release. So let's go to, let's go to the equation for gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is, the symbol is usually U, but sometimes it's written as G, P, E, or just P, E, with a subscript of G for gravity. But the equation is just, gravitational energy is just mg, which is the weight of an object, times the height in a gravitational field. Gravitational potential energy is mgh. m is your mass, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height. And our height is chosen above a reference height. Usually we just choose the ground or the lowest point. It doesn't matter as long as we are consistent in our problem. And our height is chosen above a reference height because really the only thing that matters is a change in potential energy. If you drop an object from 30 meters to 10 meters, or if you drop an object from 50 meters to 30 meters, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have the same change in potential energy. So we can always set the bottom, the lowest point, as zero height. That's what we usually do. And that, that also makes the calculations a little easier. So let's, uh, let's look at this diagram and do a couple of sample calculations. Uh, here in a diagram, in the diagram, we have a person at the top of a building, and they drop an object from the top of the building. As the object falls, it's going to speed up and speed up and speed up. So as it falls, it's going to gain kinetic energy because it's moving faster. But also based on our definition of potential energy, it's going to lose potential energy. So, so as it loses potential energy, that energy doesn't disappear. It's converted into kinetic energy, energy of motion. Let's actually figure out what the potential energies are going to be at a couple of different heights. Uh, find the potential energy of a ball dropped off a building uh, with respect to the ground and the release position. Okay, so we have three different positions here. We have the top position, which is, zoom out a little so we can see the diagram fully. Top position is 13.5 meters. So let's just make two columns. We're going to find the potential energy with respect to the ground. And then with respect to the release position. So if we're measuring potential energy with respect to the ground here, let's look at the top position. Our potential energy is equal to mgh. Uh, the mass is 5 kilograms. 5 kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And... And the height, the height from the ground in this diagram is 13.5 meters times 13.5 meters. So we can just plug that into a calculator to find what our potential energy is. 5 times 9.81 times 13.5.
662 and to two sig figs that's going to be 660 joules. It's joules because it's kilogram meters squared per second squared. All energy has the same units. So 660 joules if we're measuring from the top or with respect to the ground that is. We can also find the potential energy there with respect to the release position. Potential energy is just mgh again but if we're measuring our height with respect to the re release position, that's going to be 5 times 9.8, 1. But our release position is, well, our height above the release position is 0. So in that case, we would get 0 joules of potential energy. So let's, uh, let's look at our other two points with respect to the ground and with respect to the release position. Uh, our second point is 5 meters above the ground, so let's calculate potential energy there. Potential energy is mgh, which is 5 times 9.81. And since we're 5 meters above the ground, it's going to be a height of 5. So 25 times 9.81 gives us 245 joules, or 250 joules, to two sig figs. Let's also look at the ground. Potential energy is mgh is equal to 5 times 9.81 times, well, if we're measuring with respect to the ground at the lowest position, our height above the ground is 0, so our potential energy is just 0 joules. So if we're measuring with respect to the ground, we get 660 joules, 250 joules, and 0 joules. Let's finish up with respect to the release position. Um, so our second position is 5 meters above the ground, but we're not measuring with respect to the ground. We're measuring with respect to the release position. So let's figure out how far below the release position we are. If it's 13.5 total and 5 up from the ground to this point, that means this red arrow is going to be 13.5 minus 5, or 8.5 meters. Okay, so our potential energy then is going to be mgh, 5 kilograms, times 9.81 times. Well, our height above the release position, we're actually below the release position, so it's going to be negative height. Negative 8.5 meters, which will give us a potential energy of minus 8.5 times 9.81 times 5. Negative 417 or negative 420 joules to 200 significant figures. To 200 to 2 significant figures. And we can also do the same thing at the very bottom. Potential energy measured with respect to the release height is 5 mass times g 9.81 times our height from the release point, our height above is Negative 13.5. Negative 13.5. Plug that into a calculator. 5 times 9.81 times negative 13.5 equals negative 660 joules. So when we measure with respect to the release position, we get 0 joules, minus 420 joules, and minus 660 joules. Now, um, you should notice that whatever, whatever position we're measuring with respect to, the change in potential energy is the same. From top to bottom, we lose 660 joules of potential energy. And from top to the second position, we lose about, well, it's around 420, 430. It's closer to 425 joules. Uh, of potential energy. And the reason there's a difference is because of rounding differences, 425 joules. So no matter what our reference position is, our change in potential energy is going to be the same. But this is how we measure potential energy, m times g times h. And to recap, potential energy is equal to weight of an object times the height in a gravitational field. It can be positive, negative, or zero. It has units of joules. 
And the higher up you are, the more gravitational potential energy you have. The lower you are, the less you have. Hope this was helpful. Bye.